Now this was somewhat of a simple example. Let's take a look at a more complex, but at the same time more useful one. In this test, we expect a YouTube request exception to be thrown if the request to grab the details of a YouTube video fails. The HTTP fake we have in place returns a 500 response, which is a server error. However, a failed status code can be anything from 400 to 500 and above, so it might be helpful to test for other status codes as well. But how can we do this without having to duplicate this test again and again for each status code? The answer is using data providers. Data providers is a convenient PHP unit feature that allows us to run the same test with different inputs and even outputs if necessary. Let's use this test as an example. The first thing we need to do is to turn this hard-coded 500 status code into a variable. This variable will actually come as a parameter to our test method. Then we can use the data provider annotation to specify the name of the method that will provide the different status codes. In our case, let's call it failing status codes. Let's create the method. It needs to be public. And it also needs to return an array. The return will actually be an array of arrays where each item represents the list of arguments that will be passed to the test method. In our case, we could have 400. Now when we run the test, the data provider will inject the 400 status code. To demonstrate how this works, we can add a second argument. Accept it here. And if I die and dump B and rerun the test, here it is. So you can add as many arguments you need. Let's undo that and continue with 401, 403, 404, 422, 500, and 503. Now, if we run this test, it will actually run seven tests, one for each failing status code. One nice tip when writing data providers is to name your different sets of arguments by specifying the key for each item in the array. For example, if I was to have a 200 status code, which is a successful one that will cause my test to fail, the information regarding which dataset caused the failure isn't that helpful. I only get dataset number 4. So that basically means I need to go to my data provider and start counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this caused the failure. If I were to have keys, something like status and then the status and rerun the test, I will know the exact name of the data set causing the failure, which is nice. Now this was somewhat of a simple example. Let's take a look at a more complex, but at the same time more useful one. Here I have a test checking that the profile information can be updated. If I look inside the update profile information class under the update method, we have some validation happening here. Let's see how we can use a data provider to test each validation rule. I'll go back and duplicate this test, rename it to test profile information, update validation, remove the user variable and the assertions. And now what I want to do is to make a put request with each field and value variation that causes the validator to fail. For example, the name is required, so I could send it as an empty string and then assert that the name field is invalid. And I think we also need to pass in the error bag as a second argument. So we'll grab this, paste it here, and run the test, and it passes. Now let's introduce a data provider that does the same thing. If we think about it, what we'll need as arguments is the data we are sending with the request and the key to check for validation errors. So we'll add array, data, and string, key. And now we'll replace this with data, and here we'll have key. Let's add the data provider and we'll name it invalid profile information. Let's add the method. It will be public. 
and here we'll need to return an array of arrays where the first argument is the data which is name equals empty string and the second argument is the key. Let's rerun the test. And here it is. Let's go back to update the user profile information to grab all the rules. Paste them here. Let's comment them. And now it's easier to start writing. So we have required, then it needs to be string, which means if I enter a number, it should fail. We then have max 255. Let's generate a string longer than that. 256. Let's rerun the test. And it passes. We are done with the name. Let's start with the email. And then we'll have, it needs to be a required email, which means not valid will fail. Then we have the same max rule. So we'll do string random 255 and append at gmail.com. Rerun the test, still passes. Then the email needs to be unique, which means we could do something like email equals not unique at gmail. But if I run this, it will fail because this email is not yet taken. So let's scroll up to the test and create a user with that email. We'll do user factory create email, paste it in, rerun the test, and now it passes. So we are done with the name and email. Let's continue with the photo. We'll do photo. And to create a fake, we'll use uploaded file, fake, and then create. We need to pass in the name and to break the validation, we can pass a GIF or a GIF. So we'll do not valid GIF and photo as a second argument. Now, before we run the test, let's make sure we fake the storage using storage fake. And let's run the test. It passes. Next up, we have the max size limit. Let's duplicate this and let's say this will be a valid MIME type. So we'll do JPEG and the second argument is the size in kilobytes. So we'll do 125. Let's run the test one more time. And here it is. Finally, as I said before, it's a good idea to name these sets of parameters. And for validation, as a convention, I usually do the name of the field dot and then the validation rule. I'll do the same for the others. We'll have the field name, dot, and then the validation rule being tested. So now if I make a test fail, we will know exactly the data set causing the failure. And there you have it. To recap, we write a regular PHP unit test, we then notice the opportunity to turn the test into a template that receives different parameters. We add the data provider annotation. We then write our method that returns an array of arrays with all the parameters we want to test, and we are done. That was it. That's how you can use PHP unit data providers to reduce duplication in your tests. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.